GA4 is different from Universal Analytics. Yes, it's a different data model, but that doesn't really affect the outcomes or the kinds of insights we get from it. When people say it's different or the frustrations that people have from it are mostly about the UX, the experience of using it, like where you click, like where are the reports. I wanna show you briefly the difference in the UX between GA4 and Universal Analytics uh, side by side, so we can really compare like where these things are hoping that after watching this, you'll kind of know where to go and it'll speed up your learning curve as you begin to adopt GA4. Uh, let's jump right in. Okay, I'm in Universal Analytics, and as you know, there's a lot of reports in here. There's a bunch of reports here. They're like three layers deep. There's all kinds of them. There's maybe like, I don't remember, I counted one time. I think there's like 100 different reports. In GA4, not so much, <laughs> there's very few reports. We got a, a couple in here, a couple in here. I don't know, there's maybe like 10 or 12, 15 or something like that. So one way to think of it is Universal Analytics was always template based. These were like report templates. It was like training wheels. It gave you a lot of reports so you could get to something quickly by clicking. Uh, in GA4, it's really much more about build your own reports. Now let's look specifically at a report or two. I'm in here and I want to just show you, uh, I'm inside the all, the behavior site content all pages report. At the very top of this report, there's the trend line. That's nice. Uh, when we look at the same report in GA4, uh, we're now in engagement pages and screens, uh, looks different. We've got a trend line over here. Uh, kind of hard to see all of the, the, the legend down here as it scrolls through. And then we've got some bar charts. I think that this is a lot harder to read and more difficult for us as we, uh, because you can't really get rid of things from this line. If you want to change how this works, you really need to go into explore and kind of build a new report. Now let's look at how we choose the date. Okay, I'm back in Universal Analytics. The date range selector, mm, it's okay. Nothing great about it, I don't know. Uh, it feels a little dated, <laughs> um, ironically, in the end. When you compare, you get just a couple of options. Uh, if I want to compare to previous year, uh, I'm one of those people who's always who's compared relatively short date ranges and struggled to kind of get the weekends to match up. Uh, now I'm over here in, in uh, GA4. This date range, this is a nice upgrade. Not only can I choose the date range very quickly, when I choose to compare, it gives me to compare to previous period or uh, same period last year, matching the day of week. Boy, that's nice. So, so this is definitely a better date range comparison tool. Now let's look at how the dimensions work, how, you, how the reports uh, actually show you the data. So I'm, I'm still in the behavior site content all pages report. By default, it just shows page. That's kind of an ambiguous term. Uh, in GA4, we're gonna use a more specific term. Uh, I can switch up here to primary, different primary dimensions such as page title or other. A little bit kludgy, right? Like I've got uh, uh, one here, one here, and then I click to get a drop down, and there's a bunch of other ones in there. Uh, that is not at all how GA4 works. In GA4, we have one big report that shows all the pages and screens. And from there, we get a drop down that will show us uh, just a couple other dimensions as choices. So it's a little tighter. It's more flexible because, first of all, you choose that you want to talk about pages and screens generally. And then you can choose sort of the URLs or choose the, uh, the, the titles. Uh, there's kind of a couple of different options in here, but I think that the way that we select the dimension, it's one of the very first things you do after you choose a report in GA4 is ch choose the dimension because that's after all uh, kind of the, the type of data that we're really looking for. Now we'll move on to the secondary dimensions. Uh, a secondary dimension is when you want to add more data to an existing report. Uh, I'm going to come in here back in Universal Analytics to add a secondary dimension. It's this secondary dimension, it sounds kind of technical. I can click, I get a drop down. I can search for them or I can try to choose one. Let's add source medium to this, uh, or I'll just add, how about just medium? I'll add medium to this to this uh, report showing all the pages. And now it adds a second column, just as you'd expect, of showing another dimension for how people actually uh, arrived. Page views that, uh, visits that included that page view came from what, what a broad source of traffic. Medium is the broader source of traffic. How do we do that in GA4? A little bit, little bit nicer. We just click the plus. Um, it's been updated. The UX is a little cleaner. Medium, just choose medium. I get a couple of different options. This is actually useful if you're worried about for, uh, first touch attribution because you could choose just the first user dimension. That's the, the, the first time that person's device came to this website. Uh, you know, was the cookie there yet or not? 
Uh, if not, then it's a first user. Otherwise, you can just choose session dimension. That's actually a much more specific and probably more accurate way to look at this. Same data though, really same data. You just click the plus and we get the secondary dimension. Now, what if I want to narrow my view? I want to look at this report just for blog posts. So if I want to filter in Universal Analytics to filter this report just to show blog posts, I can just type it into this little box that's called a filter. And over here, it's just going to show me the blog posts. Now I'm looking at just the blog posts. Great. To do the same thing over here, it's not called a filter. It's just called search. And it only applies to that first, that primary dimension, that first column, as we saw a second ago, same in Universal Analytics. All I do is type the word blog, click, there's all the blog posts. Okay. Now, if I wanted to exclude something from this column um, uh, in Universal Analytics or in GA4, right, there's a way to do that. And in, G in Universal Analytics, it was back over here in the advanced filter. So maybe I just want to exclude the pages that, that contain blog and look at my non-content marketing URLs. Uh, that is an advanced filter that allows me to narrow this down and choose from any, exclude anything from the first column, or in fact, uh, choose uh, e exclude or include anything from any other column. Maybe I just want to see where the medium includes social, like we were saying. Okay, click social. Now I'm only looking at the blog posts that have uh, social as the medium. Okay, to do that same thing in GA4, it's not an advanced filter. It's not the little search tool. We have to make some. We have to literally click on this add filter button and then uh, change this entire report to just show those when the medium contains social. Include or exclude, same thing right here. It's the dimension. I could do this for metrics, but I'm going to do it for the dimension here first. Include the, the dimension. What dimension? When medium, session medium specifically, I really like that specificity, contains what? Ah, check boxes. That's really handy. Social. Click OK. Click Apply. And now it's just showing me that same thing, right? I'm basically getting my same, my same data. Um, but that's how uh, the filter and advanced filter uh, in Universal Analytics became the search tool and the uh, add filter. Uh, so that's how we, we drill down and kind of make this report more meaningful. Now let's talk about the metrics that were included in here. If you're in Universal Analytics, you get the metrics that it gives you. These are the metrics. These are all my metrics. I've got page views and this and this and this. Okay, fine. That's, these are the metrics I get. In GA4, very different. Again, it's not really like a template anymore. We're going to build this report to show just the things that we want. Uh, right now, it's giving me views and users and users and views per user and engagement and conversions and a couple of different things. Um, maybe I want uh, engagement rate. That would be nice. Engagement rate would be good. Uh, so how do I add? And I'm going to actually change these by clicking on the pencil here at the top and then customizing uh, by adding another metric. Customize report. See, now I'm kind of all the menus are gone. I'm sort of in this customization mode. I'm going to click on metrics, add a metric. Which metric do I like? I like engagement rate. Click to add that metric. Uh, I'm going to put it up near the top. I think that's where it should go. Uh, if in, in my perfect world, I would have event count and uh, average engagement time and an engagement rate, maybe conversions up here at the top, something like that. Click apply. Uh, and now I can save this report. I'm going to save it to the current report. Click save. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm going to click yes. And then now that it's saved, I'm going to go back. And I just changed the report. Very, very nice, right? So. When you click on anything in the left in GA4, you're pretty much going to be choosing one of the dimensions. You might add a secondary dimension or do add a filter to it. But before you do any of that, I would recommend first clicking that pencil and making sure it's got the metrics you like. As soon as you change the metrics, it's going to blow out everything else that you know your secondary dimension and your filter and those other things. So really, that pencil, this is kind of one of the main ways that we use this. And once you're done, boom, very nice, right? Uh, change out my page. I want to go back to page path. So now I can see basically the engagement rate which is also something specific to GA4, really, really nice. An engagement session is a session where the visitor spent more than 10 seconds, saw more than one page, or they converted. So this is uh, actually a very useful uh, metric, and I like to keep it right there. So what are we doing here? What's the difference? What's all the complaining about? It's just that it's a different UX. There's a tiny bit of a learning curve, right? You got to know where to click. You're going to build your reports. It's not template-based anymore. We're moving up the learning curve for our analytic skills by choosing the things that we want to report on and then putting them together, right? Choose it, pick it, search for it, find it, click it. One thing that we're not going to find in universe in in GA4, which I really miss, were these reports up uh, the views for the reports uh, to get these into. Um, you know, if I want to see, for example, the uh, average time on page. Uh, compared to this website average for every article I've written, wow, that's a really handy report. Um, in GA4, not a thing.
not a thing. Not a, there are no views for these reports. For that, we'd have to go into the explorations, and that's a video for another day. Again, Andy from Orbit, hope this quick review, the side-by-side -side comparison showing the UX differences between Universal Analytics and GA4 is useful to you. You got this. Jump in. The water's fine. You're going to splash around a little bit and not go anywhere until you start to get traction. You figure out where things are and how to get the data answers you want. Uh, it's going to give you just the same insights. Uh, a little bit slower at first, but in the long run, you're going to do it just as fast as you did it in, in Universal. Enjoy.